Welcome to the Butcher Market Steak of the Month Club. Uh, today we're gonna be hanging out with one of my absolute favorites, the ribeye. You love it, I love it. We know it for its beautiful fat content, that spinalis or deckle that everybody loves. And these happen to have bone on, so they're bone in. Uh, we're gonna be seasoning these up today with a little bit of signature seasoning from the butcher market and throwing it right on the grill. If you're like me, it's all about being a creature of habit and in your comfort zone, let's push ourselves a little bit today. Here we go. Preparing your steak is super simple. First, we're gonna start with just a little bit of olive oil. Then the butcher market makes it super easy for us by giving us their signature seasoning right on this ribeye. When you season your steak, you wanna season from above and let the, let the seasonings rain down evenly. Notice there's all kinds of different size granule pieces. So by lifting up and seasoning from above, we're gonna have more even coverage. Now we're gonna flip them on over and we're gonna do the same exact thing on this side. So we've got a grill at about 500 degrees right now and we're just gonna go direct grilling. If you're doing this inside, you can get a hot skillet going. Just make sure you got that smoke detector turned off. No. <laughs> That's good. You know you're doing it right when you hear that beep, 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 beep. At this point with the ribeye, it's all about the sear. These are nice thick steaks. We're gonna get a high temperature, good crust on them and a nice medium rare. Let's get it going. And this is where people I feel like start to freak out a little bit. They're like, I've got to leave it on and I can only turn it once and then flip it once. There's no rules. It's just cooking. You know, any recipe you've ever seen is just a guideline, right? So let's talk about the logic about what's going on so that you can handle any situation. We just put the meat on the grill. We've got a direct flame underneath and that's natural lump charcoal. And if I were to go pick this up and I felt like it was sticking a little bit, that means it's not time to turn it yet. But I got a nice flame going on, so let's just take a look. I mean, it literally just went on, but let's take a look. Oh, it's looking great already. So let's give, let's give it a little turn. And I love the fact that these are thicker steaks. So often when I go to stores and, and other markets, I see these thin ribeyes. You want at least a pound or a pound and a half and that bone in is a beautiful thing. It's just gonna be exuding moisture content and flavor as it cooks. I love it. You see a little bit of flare up here and there. That's not a bad thing, okay? All that's happening is that fat is dripping down little by little on that charcoal and it's caramelizing and coming up as blue smoke. So we're smoking these steaks with their own dripping fat. We're gonna cook these steaks to an internal temperature of about 125 to 130. When you're ready to take a temperature, find the thickest part of the steak and go towards the middle. We're sitting at almost 100 degrees right now, so just need a couple more minutes. You're doing great, team. So let's take a brief second to talk about char, okay? Um, this is just a, woo, it's hot. That is just a great looking caramelized steak right there, okay? When I say caramelized, the Maillard reaction has occurred. I don't mean burnt, that would be over caramelized, okay? Uh, you want to see a nice crust, not a dry crust, but just by putting that seasoning on there, there's a little bit of sweetness to it that's going to help us build that bark on these beautiful ribeyes. Lovely stuff. So if I want an internal temperature of 130 degrees, I'm probably going to pull that steak off at like 125 or so. Uh, carryover cooking is going to occur. So when I put that steak on the cutting board, it's not just going to stop, it's going to continue. Inertia is going to take that temperature up, 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 then it's going to plateau. Then it's resting, and now we can slice into it. So at 125, I'm gonna take these off and let them carry over to 130. All right, these are looking spectacular. Let's go ahead and bring them off and set them on our cutting board. So Steak of the Month and the Butcher Market have made it so simple for us. The hardest part about this whole process is letting the steak rest when it comes off the grill. Uh, but it's really important. If we slice into this steak right now, uh, we're gonna see a lot of the moisture from the inside leach out onto the cutting board. And what that tells us is that it's not going to be 100% as good as it could have been, all right? We've taken painstaking effort to grill these beautiful steaks. We owe it to ourselves to let them rest. They're tightened up a little bit right now. All that moisture is pushed to the outside. Let it rest, let it all come into the center, evenly distribute, and then we're gonna slice into it. All that beautiful fat content in there, that we that's the reason we went to the butcher market because they got the best steaks, all that collagen, turned to gelatin, which turned to moisture, which turned to flavor. Keep it in the steak. Let it rest. 
So the team at the butcher market has got this beautiful butter, the whiskey butter, and I want to put that on top of the steak to almost glaze it as a sauce while it's resting. And I'm just going to use my gloved hand here and just brush it right over the top. Got another two or three minutes there. Hang in, you're doing great. All right, we've done the hardest part. We've let it rest. Now we're going to release the bone. So we're going to carve right off this bone. You can leave a little meat on there if you like. Those are kind of fun to, to, to chew on. Uh, and that's a chef's treat right there. Are you kidding me? Put that right there for later. Uh, let's go ahead and slice the other one off. Now we've got the best part on the cow, in my opinion, the spinalis or the ribeye deckel. We'll set that there. Same thing with this one. This one's got a big one. Oh man, this is nice. Beautiful. I like to slice these in half. And as the oxygen begins to interact with the meat, the myoglobin within the meat is going to begin to bloom out. So we're going to see it rouge up here in a little bit. But this is going to be absolutely stunning. I'm really glad we let this steak rest. It looks gorgeous. The decal or spinalis has such a great fat, intermuscular fat to muscle ratio, and it just makes it one of the luscious pieces. Let's give it a go. Oh, that's got my name all over it. That's my friend, the ribeye. Mm. So our good friends at the butcher market are gonna to continue to bring us those quality cuts uh, every month, rotating it through, keeping it so much fun. Thank you for joining us, thanks for watching, and thanks for being a part of the Steak of the Month Club with the Butcher Market. Cheers.